Hello everybody, welcome back. So this week we're starting a new project and we'll be making a type 3 slash 2 CX. So I have done a whole load of research on these but uh, for copyright reasons I can't actually show you any of it. Uh, so have some drawings. Uh, so these were made from around about 850 to around about 1150. Uh, it's an Anglo-Saxon form of CX. Uh, and we're going to be doing some pattern welding for it. So it's going to have a nine bar construction uh, with four pattern welded bars uh, and three bars of wrought iron and one bar of carbon steel for the edge. So these are all going to be assembled and forge welded together. So for the pattern welding I'm using EN42J which is a spring steel and some 15N20 uh, which is nickel steel so etch resistant. So the bars I've got are quite long, I ordered these off of eBay, uh, so I'm going to cut them in half. So with all the bars cut to right size, I'm going to assemble them in alternating layers. Uh, An Anglo-Saxon pattern welding was quite coarse compared to modern pattern welding. They had, most, for the most part, they had quite a small layer count, so Again, with 16 layers for this, I'm not going to fold it over to double the layer count. I'm just going to forge weld all this together and draw it out. So to make my life easier, I'm going to weld them all together with my arc welder. Uh, I could use wire to hold them all together. I could uh, put a metal collar around it. That's all a bit of a faff. Uh, I've got a time limit for making these videos, uh, so I'm just going to arc weld it together. So, and what I will also do is I will weld a handle to it, and that'll save me messing around with a pair of tongs. Just makes life a little bit easier. So at this stage, I will pile up my fire, and if you've watched my welding videos before, you'll know that it's to get a nice big neutral layer, and I will lay that in the fire and at this stage I will actually turn the fire down um, because I want it to heat up slowly uh, because this isn't one solid piece yet the outer bars will heat up first and I don't want them to burn before the middle bars have even gotten warm so I will flux quite densely because I'm dealing with carbon steel and it's the first time I'm using 15N20 I don't know how that's going to react so it's an extra reason to flux so back in the fire and I am rotating the work to heat it up evenly and making sure the coke doesn't all run off. So keeping that all together with my rake. And it's off to the power hammer to weld it all together. I'm not hitting hard or fast, I'm just tapping it together to weld it. It took about three heats for me to be happy with the welding. Uh, and this is the end result, which is one nice big lump. So at this stage, I will give it a jolly good scrub and back to the power hammer and I will start drawing this out. So I want it to draw it out to about 12 mil square, which is about half inch. Uh, and I'm being quite careful, I'm giving equal hammer blows to all four faces because I don't want it to distort. I want the pattern to stay straight in there. So went off to one side a little bit, so here I am just tilting it ever so slightly under the power hammer to dress it square again. I'm not overly keen on doing this because it can distort the pattern and I want the layers to be as straight and even as possible. So when we get close to the finished size, I will use a piece of scrap 12 square and I will use that as a stop for the power hammer in order to make the bar to the correct dimensions. So and after that, I will give it a bit of a straighten over the hardy hole. So I normally do this cold. I'm doing this with a bit of heat in it because uh, I don't want to cause delamination or anything. So 
and as you can just make out the lines are fairly straight and even so I'm quite happy with this they forge down nicely so the next thing I will do is I will twist these because I want a twist pattern in it so over to the vise I've not got a fancy bending jig I've got my granddad's old spanner and a vise and I'm just twisting uh, I'm not counting the twists because it's over different distances anyway uh, I'm just doing it by eye and making sure that the twists are even so when you're heating it up in the fire heating up the next section make sure that the heat bleeds into the previously twisted part otherwise you'll end up with a slow twist between the two bits so this is the bar all twisted up it's a bit wing it's a bit wobbly but never mind so I've got my piece of scrap again and I'm going to forge this twisted bit square comes with a power hammer so you could do all this by hand I'm doing it with a power hammer because I have one like I said before I've got a time limit so here's the bar so I will now cut it into nine inch sections as so like so so for the next bit I have a piece of 18th century wrought iron left over from previous jobs I will forge that out to 24b12 and I'll also forge some out to 6b25 so we start off with the carbon steel core for the edge and either side of that I will lay some 25 by 6 wrought iron on top of that we have two twisted bars on top of that a piece of 25 by 12 wrought iron two more twisted bars and the final piece of 24 by 12 so I will take this merry assembly and I will arc weld it together just at the ends I do see people putting beads of weld down the middle sometimes uh, I'm sure that works absolutely fine I'm not going to do it because I don't want to introduce any mild steel into the equation so at this stage here it all is with a handle welded to it makes it a bit easier to handle so again I will just lay it onto the fire in order to slowly absorb heat and I will flux it quite heavily and to start with I will just weld up the tip I'm doing this by hand uh, because it's a bit of a delicate job for the power hammer so welding in both planes just to make sure I have no cold shuts So, and you just have to do this a few inches at a time and you have to be careful to hit every surface in order to make sure it welds it does take a bit of practice I have cocked up quite a lot of pieces over the years I think right now I'm at a stage where I'm reasonably confident with this So with it all tack welded together I will head over to the power hammer and I will make sure that weld goes in and because the power hammer hits nice and square over a wide area nice and fast I'm doing bigger areas with the welding heats because uh, I can afford to do so and here we have the billet ready to be forged into the CX however you'll have to wait till next week for that bit so this concludes the forging of the billet 
next week we will forge this into a blade blank and hopefully do some grinding on it. So again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and the work I do, please consider donating on Patreon. Every penny goes towards making these videos. Here is this week's list of Patreon donors. Thanks a lot, guys.